<laughs> Welcome to Hidden Riches. My name is Andrew Hill, and today's treasure comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And I tend to read from the New King James Version, this Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and I want to talk briefly about the appeal for unity. This was an apostle's appeal for unity among the church and among the people of God to esteem others greater than themselves, to be like-minded, to be one, to share in the same love, to be of one accord. This is crucial, and it's the tendons that are attached to the bones that kind of pull everything together. It's the ligaments, it's the joints, it's the in-between place that you don't hear as much about, um, and especially in a, in a ministry where there is just one head leader, the one primary leader. But I believe the church is definitely moving more into a team um, leadership style, team ministry. And I know a lot of churches have elders now, and they have various leaders that work under that primary head. And Typically, you're going to have someone where the buck stops with them, someone, someone who's responsible at the end of the day. But uh, to minister as a team and to know what it's like to prefer others in their gifting over yourself, is, is we're going to learn a lot more, oh my goodness, about that <laughs> in the time ahead. It's going to be great. So um, this, this verse is paramount if you have a team that the Lord has set before you. Our ministry, Manifest Ministries, is a team ministry. My wife and I work together along with our friend Cynthia. So it's a threefold cord that is not easily broken. In the previous video, I've talked about threefold cords. But your ministry may have five people. It may have seven. It may have 12. Um, and they are going to be in charge of various aspects of the ministry. You don't want to micromanage. You want to allow them to do what they do best. Give them grace. Give them time to expand and to grow. You're going to have team, team members that are at different areas of growth and faith level. There are going to be things that come against the team or against their lives individually or personally that is going to affect them in different ways than it would someone else in the team or you. So their faith level may be different than yours. And so you need grace for that and interacting with them and all those kind of things. You also need to have some sort of a common theology. It's hard to be in agreement and it's hard to fulfill this appeal for unity without there being a theology that has a similar thread. Now, you can obviously have room for differences and opinions that you have or per, uh, perspective that may be refreshing and different in the body of Christ, but on the primary uh, root elemental and elementary aspects of the ministry, you want to be totally in agreement because it will produce problems down the road. For instance, if you are a cessationist in the group and believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit were just for the time of Acts and for the Bible, then it's going to be difficult if you're with someone who's saying that they're a prophet and they prophesy regularly. That's not going to be the most productive group. You're going to be out of agreement a lot. Um, how you view baptisms, how you view pastoral counseling. There's a lot of things to that. Our ministry specifically doesn't deal with that as much as a, it's a school basically of the prophets. It's a house where we build up the saints and give them food and resources to grow. And you can pick us up at any, you know, on your phone or on your desktop or your laptop. And, but we will have some hands-on kind of interaction. And I'm grateful for that because it puts us in a position where we have a moving tabernacle. Uh, but we do work as a team, and we are very much in agreement. We'll also have a glory room where people can come and just experience the presence of the Lord. It won't be about a specific speaker or uh, a particular person ministering. It'll be open for us to wait upon the Lord and to see what he wants to do. Very excited for that. And let me just close with uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3 of Philippians. Uh, because Paul was so uh, earnest about this, he was so... Uh, a deliberate and intentional about unity, that he even called certain ministers out by name that they would walk in this and that the church would gather around them and help them. He says, I implore uh, Yodia, I implore Yodia, and I implore, and his name can be pronounced Sintesh or Sintik, Tankik, Sintik. 
I implore Yodia and I implore Sintik to be of the same mind in the Lord. Very difficult names. <laughs> I had to look up pronunciation. <laughs> and I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. So he was urging the church to, to, to come together. He said to be of the same mind in the Lord, because there was obviously a schism between these two in the Lord. And so he was urging the church to say, hey, gather around these guys. Uh, I'm encouraging them to step into this. And I'll even read, I think I actually read verses two and three. Let me read verse one. Uh, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. So he loved uh, the churches that, that he had birthed through birth pains and, and travail in the spirit and praying for them and also in building them up and teaching them and then releasing other leaders to pastor them. And he would check back on them and he would write these letters to them even if he was in prison and it was to uh, encourage them and it was to repair and there was ministries of restoration and all of these kind of things going on. So Paul is a tremendous example to us of the apostolic ministry and what it means to be an apostle and, and how that looks in restoration and building and unity. And Father, I just pray and I appeal for the body of Christ to be in unity. Lord Jesus, I also pray uh, that your prayer would be answered. I stand with you, Lord Jesus, the elder brother, and I agree with you in your prayer that the church would be one as you and the Father are one. I know that that prayer will be answered sooner or later, and I pray in agreement with you that we would begin to fulfill our commission no matter what tribe we're in, no matter what part of the body we are, but we would fulfill it without judging the person who's in the other aisle and be able to encourage and support wherever we see the move of God and that we would support, promote, and protect the move of God among our brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen.